Hey all, it's Denise here, Nola Collectibles, and welcome back to my channel. I'm here today to do, as promised, a Pennsylvania Thrift and Antique Mall haul. I had went to go visit some family up in Pennsylvania a couple of weeks back, a week ago, feels like so long ago. And of course, whenever I go up there, I like to hit all the antique malls and the thrift shops and, you know, just kind of like turn it into a fun sourcing trip and meet some people and, you know, have fun and just do the things I like to do. Look at gorgeous old jewelry. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Denise. I'm a part-time reseller. I sell primarily on eBay where my store name there is NOLA Collectibles and I'm also a jewelry enthusiast. So I love to collect and wear vintage and antique jewelry. So I'm going to get right into it without further ado and I'm trying to figure out how to best do this. I think where we're going to start, I didn't capture this on video uh, because this Antique Mall did not allow filming in them. Actually, I did a whole kind of like thrift with me video that I posted last weekend. If you haven't checked that out, go ahead and do so. Check it out. It was a good time. Um, I did shopping in two spots in that video, three spots actually. Uh, the Phillipsburg Antique Mall in Phillipsburg, New Jersey. Then I went over to S. Seam Antiques in Bath, Pennsylvania. And then I went to the Steckel House, which was right across the street from S. Seam and did a little shopping there as well. So I'm gonna start with the place that, like I said, they didn't allow filming and they were called uh, Weil Antiques. And Weil Antiques, W-E-I-L, is located in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And uh, it's huge. It's like, I don't know, like 20,000 square feet. They have something like 300 antique vendors in there. It's fabulous. So there's one lady, uh, she's got a really extensive case in, towards the front of the door and it's just filled with tons of stuff. And so I like to go over there and check her stuff out and she happened to be having a 20% off sale. I'm just taking a sip really quick, excuse me. Um, she was having a 20% off sale and I'll tell you when I go over there, she doesn't tend to have her jewelry labeled correctly. So it's not what, what she says it is, is not always what you're going to get. Uh, some of it's erroneously identified. And so sometimes that's a win for me. And sometimes it's a lose for people who are shopping there. Uh, last time I was in there, she had a bracelet like listed for $65 saying it was sterling silver and turquoise and it was Liz Claiborne. But anyway, what did I get this time? So you can see right here, I picked up this beautiful kind of carved Bakelite bracelet here. And um, I'm loving this. I don't have too much brown Bakelite uh, and I just love the carving on this. And this guy uh, was not, I wanna say this one was $27. Uh, so it's a nice wide bangle bracelet. And again, everything that was in this particular vendor's booth was 20% off. So everything was a good deal there. So yeah, I just like the look of it. I like that it's nice and wide. And like I said, the brown is just not something I see too, too much of, um, you know, when I'm thrifting or, you know, sourcing or when I go even to my local thrift stores and whatnot. So I like the look of that and the price was right. And that's more of an item for me, just like as a collector. I picked up this guy right here and this is a brass Art Nouveau pen, uh, brooch right here. Really beautiful with um, a kind of very typical swirl Art Nouveau motif of the woman with the hair and it's flowing. And then we have there two kind of faux um, amethyst or amethyst glass. And you can see these guys are, are cut by hand because you can see the facets are very large and kind of crude. And um, you can also tell by the way they're set. So this is definitely an older Art Nouveau piece. And you can see on the back, sometimes we talk about how we want to date jewelry. This one does have a C clasp. So this does make this consistent with the Art Nouveau era. So I just thought that this one was just a, a really beautiful little Art Nouveau piece. And this one I paid $14 for. So I got that lovely lady. I like her so much. Then I got this. Um, this one is a Czechoslovakia Again, a kind of a brass pin here and butterfly motif with some blue rhinestones there. And this one, I, I just, I have, I love Czechoslovakian rhinestone and glass jewelry and the brass jewelry. They just made such beautiful pieces. And this one, uh, the, the pin is bent in the back. It's not in the best condition, but I, I didn't pay very much for this either. So I wanna say that this was like $6. And it is marked Checo right there on the back. And so, you know, Czechoslovakia, very well known for its rhinestone and glass kind of componentry and jewelry. And they were known for creating rhinestones that look like real fine gemstones. So like, like, like what we see with 
amethyst glass or here with this blue, which kind of to me looks like synthetic sapphire. So that little dude I picked up as well. And out of that lot of what I purchased overall at Wild Antiques, this one I was the most excited about. And I paid $21 for this. And this is a legitimate Art Deco um, Egyptian styled celluloid necklace. And so this is why I say this is legitimate. Um, you know, they exhumed King Tut firstly in 1922. And this created a huge surge of um, interest in things that were Egyptian styled. So when sometimes you'll see in Art Deco motifs, a lot of Egyptian kind of stylization coming into play there. So um, I just thought this was absolutely stunning. These are very rare to find. And it's because, you know, celluloid is an early form of plastic. It's made from camphor. It was developed like in the 1860s, 70s, like right around that time period, like the predecessor of modern plastic really before Bakelite even, right? So we know Leo Bakelins. So uh, it was made, and I've said, said this quite a bit in some of my, my videos, it was um, used quite a bit in jewelry making to mimic some of, you know, some some things that were more expensive, like coral or ivory or tortoise, for example. And so here we have just, I think this is just a stunning example of it. And I think, like I said, and like, look at the kind of paperclip style um, chain that we have here. I just think this is really truly unique, truly rare, and in excellent condition uh, given its age. <laughs> this is uh, coming up on a hundred years old of age. So uh, that's pretty phenomenal when you think about it. So uh, pieces like this, you don't tend to find them anymore just because like I said, they are very delicate and you know, they're cracked or they're damaged. Um, but when you do find them, they tend to go between, I'd say between two and $500, just depending on how elaborate they are. And so um, this, like I said, very, very exciting find for me. This was just so unique. And again, it was in that case. So I don't necessarily think that she knew uh, what it was. She had it listed as a Lucite necklace. So <laughs> I was just looking at my receipt. I have that really beautiful and very old and unique piece right there. So um, when I go to Allentown, I do like to visit the Wild Antiques and then very close by is also something called Sur South Mercantile Mall and it's actually located in a mall. So <laughs> with the closure of all of these department stores and retail businesses that are closing out, um, you have these vacant malls. And so in one of them, someone rented the space and created an antique mall, which I thought was fabulous because they had great parking, they had bathrooms, they had a food court, <laughs> all of that plus antiques, sign me up, yes. So I do like to go there and I find kind of, I always find interesting things there. And um, one of the things that I purchased there very cheaply too, prices are fantastic there. Uh, I got this, this gold tone and carved stone scarab necklace here. And what attracted me to this obviously was kind of like the carved stones meant to look like scarabs. Again, I love the Egyptian revival jewelry. A lot of people like Egyptian revival jewelry. And what is most surprising, I think, about this piece, and you guys will probably find it surprising too, this is Kirk's Folly. So, you know, it's got the Kirk's Folly hang tag on it. And to me, this is not most typical for Kirk's Folly jewelry. When you think of Kirk's Folly, Folly it's always this like, whimsical moon face jewelry fairies hanging on stars like all of that and it's very collectible people really love kirk's folly because of that whimsical aspect to it uh, so this guy just excellent condition i love it has genuine gemstones we have some sodalite and we have some tiger's eye here really pretty um, overall and so this guy i want to say uh, that's a unikite this guy, I want to say I paid $6 for it. It was 50% off. So the vendor who was selling this jewelry, she had a ton of jewelry. She even had stuff, like jewelry bags, which I didn't pick up because I, I assumed that they were picked through. I looked through them and, it, and they were very high priced. I want to say they're like $60, $75. So I passed on that. But she had a lot of jewelry, 50% off. So I did end up getting this, that Kirk's Folly necklace, which I like a whole lot. Which else did I get there? I picked up this, this is the same vendor and uh, it was listed for five, so I paid 250. And this is just a Sarah Coventry Lucite cross. Uh, I have a lot of chains that I could put this on and I do collect Sarah Coventry jewelry. So for $2.50, I just wasn't gonna pass that up. Let's see where else. Um, there was another vendor there that had a case full of rings, lots and lots of rings. So 
what I ended up getting there, and they were also they were twenty percent off with this specific vendor. So I did pick up a good amount of rings, and so I'll show you. I thought these prices were excellent, and I'll show you why and talk through I, why I like some of these. Let's maybe move some of this over here. Make room for more pretties. Um, I picked up this ring right here. This is a sterling silver, and this is a made in Mexico piece. I like these rings with the elongated profiles just because I think they tend to look very nice on your finger. They kind of elongate your finger, and it is just really lovely. It makes a great little statement, and you can see there it's got the hallmarks in there. Um, and it looks like to me an older piece made in Mexico. Uh, the eagle with the number in it does typically tell you that a piece is made in um, Mexico City. So it's made in the capital and they will have the eagle will have different numbers in it, one through three, and that will typically tell you the time of which the piece was manufactured. So I think this particular piece was made in the 60s based on that eagle mark, the, the eagle with the number three. I have to go back and check that, but I think that's correct. Um, so I just think this is a great piece of jewelry, nicely made, nice kind of statement. So uh, $18 with 20% off. I thought that was a great little deal. And I went crazy in this case, this woman's case just because she has great jewelry, great jewelry. Um, which something that really, really excited me was this ring right here. And the reason why you can see they're marked 18 and um, the discount was on the entirety of the booth. The, the reason why this excites me is because I recognize the mark on the inside of this ring, and I'm gonna show it to you right there. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but that's the symbol for a jewelry line called Mar-a-Lago. Mar-a-Lago specializes in Larimar jewelry, which is this blue, yummy, gorgeous stone here, which is quite expensive, and it uh, is, tends to come from the Caribbean. Uh, so you will find Mar-a-Lago stores in, in various like, you know, Virgin Island stores and stuff like that. And it also is sold online and it's, uh, it's very expensive. So this one is so heavy and very cool and very well made. Look at that. Got a bit of a modernist aesthetic to it. And this style is currently on the Mar-a-Lago website and is currently being sold I think for $225. So it's a new style. It's still available, which I always like because people are always looking for deals when something, you know, they see a particular style, they go on the secondary market and they'll type the name of that style and see if they can find it for cheaper. So that's that was really, really, really exciting to me again, just because it's more logo and uh, currently manufactured. I got this guy here. This one is marked J.M. Sterling, and this is just a really pretty kind of Art Nouveau lily, um, calla lily design here. Uh, it's got a little bit of a modern aesthetic to it, and I, I think this is a very sweet ring as well. Of course, these rings are all in my size. How cute, cute, cute. I think I have to do a little bit more research into this uh, manufacturer, but uh, it was very kind of, modernist looking designs, what I initially had found. So that guy too. And what else? I got this very cool. This is like Native American style. And it is like a shadow box style ring with um, the stone bezel set in the middle. And I love this turquoise. I think it's a really pretty turquoise piece. I like the shadow box style. That guy looks like that. I'll try that one on as well. It's very pretty. Should have um, should have grabbed my ring sizer. That's really gorgeous, isn't it? So I grabbed that one. And then I also got this really fabulous kinetic kind of spin spinner ring right here. And you can tell it's got this little component on here. It's two-tone, it's got the gold tone and the sterling silver. It just feels very heavy and well-made. It's really nice. I just like the look of it and that it's so kind of thick and unusual. And I don't know if you can tell here, this design is, it's an elephant. Are we the right way? Let me say, it's an elephant. Elephant, And um, that guy looks like that. You can see the little bezel set amethyst on top as well. And like I said, just really kind of a different and unique type of ring. And when you wear it, it looks like that. 
that just sits flat against your knuckle. Um, so cool. I don't know. Like I said, uh, it's only marked 925. There's no other hallmarks on it, but this is just so cool. Let's see this. I grabbed my ring sizer. Let's see what we're dealing with here. You know what? It doesn't even fit on the ring sizer because it's U-shaped. <laughs> so it doesn't slide down the ring sizer, of course. Anyway, definitely grab that one as well just because unique and different. Felt very quality, very well made. So I picked up that one. And then I also got this one right here. And this one is beautiful and it has a very large synthetic spinel. So this kind of greenish, almost looks like ectoplasm <laughs> this uh, greenish beautiful in an east to west setting um such a lovely cut on this stone it's got a really nice kind of elongated rectangle cut on this what i also liked about this was the setting this to me looks like a handmade ring so when you look at the under gallery of it there you can see some of the work um that someone may have done on this ring so and just because it's such a heavy and well-made kind of ring leads me to believe that this was a handmade hand, handmade ring. So I think this is just, like I said, great looking, very heavy, good quality, and uh, the synthetic spinel does fluoresce. It is one of those things that does. Let's see if we do this. You can see, yep, you can kind of see it right there. It's a it fluoresces big time. So that's really fun and just a really beautiful ring and well-made. So I got that one from that same vendor as well. Let me see if there's anything else that I picked up at the South Mercantile. I think that that might be it. Yes. So let's, uh, we'll move on. Again, I'm gonna just kind of move these aside just so that we have room. And um, yeah, this is my um, Art Deco carved celluloid floral ring set in brass. And I actually got this one on eBay. I got it for a great price and I just love it so much because it's, it's so substantial, it's so large. And then I, I did pair it with um, some Native American copper and um, cuff bracelets right here. I have the set of two of these guys. So I just think they look great together. I like it a whole lot. Um, okay, so in my video that I did last week, I, I spent a lot of time at um, the Phillips or Antique Mall and they were so lovely. The owners were fabulous. They were so cool about letting me film and we chatted quite a bit and I had a great shopping experience and just overall, um, you know, great time shopping there. If you happen to be like in that area of Phillipsburg, New Jersey or like Easton, Pennsylvania, it's definitely worth stopping by. So I picked up a few items there. I'm going to go through some of them. The first one I wanted to show you guys is this piece right here. And this is like a really great mid-century modern looking Mexican piece of sterling silver jewelry. And it has a hallmark right on the back. And you can see here, um, it is marked, oh, it is upside down. <laughs> Let's put it right side up. You can see right there, um, it is marked that H, H N O S is typically short for Hermanos, Hermanos GS. So GS is the maker and this one, um, just really beautiful, nicely made artisan piece from Mexico. And what I was able to find about Hermanos GS uh, is that they were um, Miguel Garcia Martinez. And this was the style mid-century with the inlaid turquoise or inlaid stones that they were most known for doing. So I saw quite a bit of earrings made by these guys. I did not find something that was uh, a fish. And I will say that I think this is so quintessentially mid-century modern, and that's really what attracted me to this piece. It's, I think it's a, just a fabulous looking, um, very nice, large, substantial, well-made, signed by the maker piece of mid-century modern sterling silver jewelry. So I, I liked it so much. I wanna say this, that was maybe $22, I wanna say. I picked up that and um, I also picked up, I saw these, I don't, in the video, there was me kind of walking by the jewelry displays and they had little baskets of jewelry and this was in there and nothing was priced and they told me they actually had just gotten all the jewelry in. So it was really fun to dig through and I recognize this um, immediately because this is Sarah Country jewelry and this is actually just called Burgundy, but as you can see, they're Lucite cherries 
And this got, this collection was available firstly in 1972 through Sarah Coventry and in the catalogs until about 1975. And so I've purchased and sold this pin quite a bit. And this is very easy to come by. You can find this, you know, there's many of them on the market. They're easy to find. What's not easy to find is the matching clip-on earrings. So I was excited to find these. Um, I just think they're super, super sweet in that beautiful fuchsia pink kind of lucite color and how great to have a set. And so I will probably, I probably will be selling these because like I said, it is difficult to find the earrings and, um, some people will list these as jelly bellies. They are not jelly bellies. They are just clear loose side. Jelly bellies have to be clear. Uh, they cannot be colored. So uh, when you see listings that might say jelly belly and it's not clear, it's usually because they're keyword spamming. <laughs> they're trying to jump on that bandwagon of adding those keywords to help improve their search ranking. <laughs> so anyway, what else I get? In that little basket that I rooted through, I got this really beautiful uh, made in Germany. You see these coming from Germany or sometimes they're made in Austria. And it's a big kind of like honking blue faceted glass centerpiece there and I love the ones that come in beautiful colors and um, that one is like that and of course it's adjustable because it's open um, but these are very typical in that with the rope style um, coming from Austria and Germany so I, I like these there is a collector's mark for these people do like collecting them and I've sold I think in the past I actually sold one that was either purple or fuchsia I can't remember but that one's in gorgeous condition and it's just so clean and and lovely and sparkles so nicely so I got that guy and then I picked up um, this was just like kind of like a fun pickup right here this is a little this is a Taurus right right the ram or the rams Taurus Aries I can't remember but I think it's fun I like zodiac jewelry you can see it looks really good on it's fun it's kind of chunky he's got the red rhinestone eyes Ooh. why not so I think this guy was like three or four dollars so I picked that guy up and then I also got this one also three or four dollars and this is just a, a gold tone snake brooch with rhinestone accents I, again, I uh, just similar to, you know, Zodiac jewelry, people like snake jewelry. Uh, it's, it does sell well for me. So people, I think, are always looking for motifs that have snakes. And, um, you know, this one is not marked, but I think he's great looking and he's in excellent condition. So I got that guy as well. What else? I got this, um, this is a little costume jewelry ring right here. And it has kind of yellow rhinestones, again, east to west setting and, um, I thought just thought this was cute. I don't think this was too much money. I want to say it was two or three three dollars, but uh, I just thought it was kind of a fun little costume jewelry pickup. So added that guy to my basket of goodies. The most exciting pickup for me. Oh, I did get these also. Um, these were the tag is actually still on them. These are three dollars, and I think and these are just the most adorable little fatty fatty reindeers <laughs> little chunky reindeer in a nice really heavy sterling silver and uh, they gave me kind of Silpata vibes they remind me of Silpata but they don't have a whole mark on them but I just think they're absolutely adorable and they were very nicely made very good quality and nice and heavy and so for three dollars I pick those up so add those guys right there no focus up the most exciting purchase out of what I got at the Phillipsburg Antique Mall is this one right here, which I'm about to show you. And um, this is a sterling silver and guilloche enamel ball watch. And this one, I think I paid $6 for. And so you can see here, these um, are quite rare. They are um, basically uh, the guilloche enamel, so beautiful on this. And look at this little bezel set. Ugh, so pretty the beautiful pink on here I'm obsessed with it the color is so vibrant and so beautiful and so you know guilloche is, is is a technique that's usually involves mechanical engraving so they will engrave on an underlying substance in this case it's sterling silver because I did open up this case and the case is also sterling silver as well. It, it unscrews and the movement, it still, it still works. So the movement is actually good. It's Swiss movement, which is fabulous. As soon as I opened it up, it started working. So, um, and then you can see here, it's on a really pretty little sterling silver uh, pin. 
so cute. I'm obsessed with this. The inside of it is just gorgeous and it has the manufacturer also engraved on the inside. And these do cost, um, go for quite a bit of money and um, I've seen them go between three to $500, just depending on the maker and the quality of the guilloche and the enameling. And what they will do is like, you know, once, uh, once they do this kind of engraving technique, they will put a clear enamel over it, which just gives it that beautiful kind of glossy finish. So uh, just a really beautiful piece, very, very different, very unique and, and super, super sweet. I just love the color on here. I love the bow. I think it's just a gorgeous piece of antique jewelry. So um, added that one as well. And that to me was the most exciting purchase of the day for sure. Um, what else did I get from there? Non-jewelry related. Let's put this guy aside because I don't want him to get damaged. Non-jewelry related. I, I picked up a frame and it's also in my video. You can see me walking around and I spotted this guy on the shelf. And so I did just want to really quickly show you. And this is so cute. It's like this art deco. Let me see if I could zoom back. There we go. And um, it's just got this kind of hand painted fabric with the palm trees and it's all in brass and it has little kind of faux pearl accents. I just thought this was so, so cute. I don't know what it is about this that appealed to me. Like, I guess the fact that it's tropical, it's got kind of like an art deco vibe to it. I like it's nice and heavy and made out of the brass and I like the hand painted aspect of the fabric as well. So I just think this is so pretty and this was only like $11. So I definitely picked that one up. I just couldn't resist. It was uh, calling out to me from the shelf. And I thought it was super fun. So I got that too over at the Phillipsburg Antique Mall. Okay, so finally, the last place um, that I stopped at was in Bath, Pennsylvania, and it was the um, S. Seam Antiques and the Steckel House. The Steckel House and S. Seam Antiques are both owned by a woman named Carol Bear. And I was speaking with her. She actually, it's so funny, she like wrote, um, she, you know, these um, Images of America book, books. I don't know if you've ever seen these, um, but she did a whole thing here about the one for Bath, Pennsylvania. And so she knew all about the history of Bath and, you know, she and I were chatting and she was great. She gave me like a little tour of her bed and breakfast, which is absolutely gorgeous. They have Airbnbs in there if you're interested in staying in it. Um, super, super fun. So SCM, I think I went to firstly. And what did I get at SCM? I got a couple of pieces at SCM. I didn't get a whole lot. I got this mid-century sterling silver kind of leaf cutout pendant there. I just, again, I like the look of it. I like that it's very kind of mid-century modern. And uh, this one does not have a hallmark, but is marked sterling right on the back there. So that was a great little piece of jewelry. I want to say that that was like maybe $13 or $15, something like that. I also got there this um, Sarah Coventry. This is in the box, the pinwheel earrings, clip-on earrings. And really I picked this one up because it is still in the box and these pieces are becoming um, harder and harder to find. So I got that little um, Sarah Coventry piece. And then when I went across the street to the Steckel House, the bed and breakfast, I got a couple of very cute pieces as well. I picked up this little um, sterling silver and Delft porcelain bracelet here. and. Um, very typical with the Delft blue and the, you know, the, um, the motif there with the windmill windmills, just so, so cute. I like this a whole lot. I thought this was a very sweet little piece and, um, this one was not, not that much either. I want to say that that was also maybe like $24, something like that, but I think that's so sweet. I love that so much. So I got that and then I picked up this, um, this, um, this is, I am blanking you guys. What's, what's wrong with me? This is Marcusite. <laughs> this beautiful, elaborate Marcusite brooch with the bird motif on it. And I just thought this was absolutely stunning. I, I love it so much. It looks like it's, uh, it's got rhodium plating on it because it's still in fabulous condition. And it's such a glamorous piece of jewelry. I, I like the motif of it so much. So um, that guy I added to my pile there. And then... Um, I also, you all saw this in my video, there was some Bakelite bracelets. I think we're a little too far zoomed in, so let's go out a little bit. Ooh, there we go. 
these Bakelite bangle bracelets, and these are really cute, thinner um, stacker style, and these are great spacers, like in between wider, uh, wider bracelets that you might have. And these were um, eight and nine dollars. So we have a really fun kind of like spinach Bakelite there. And then this is like butterscotch. Those were a great little pickup. I thought a great deal. And then I, can, I cannot resist. Uh, she had a fantastic collection of antique jewelry boxes. I, I These very hard to come by. And again, back to the celluloid kind of motif. This is also made in celluloid. And this is kind of that like clamshell mode you know it looks like so art deco looking with its lines and the floral motif and this reminds me you know sometimes when you go like when you go to theaters that are from the art deco period like uh, the palace theater in new york comes to mind a radio city music hall and you'll see uh, th this type of design in some of the you know the elements of the building there but i think this is so gorgeous it is cracked but i think i only paid eight dollars for this and I mean, how gorgeous is this? Look at the inside, lined in velvet and um, satin. So pretty. I mean, can you imagine like someone proposing to you and pulling this jewelry out and then having just a gorgeous antique ring right inside? <laughs> What a moment that would be. I put this one in here um, just to kind of give us that moment, that fake moment. But I love this so much. These are so beautiful. And you know what this reminded me of? There was this um, antique and estate jewelry seller on Instagram. Well, they have a physical store. I think they're in Portland, I want to say. But they're called Era, E-R-A, Gems. And they have an Instagram account. And literally, it is them opening antique and vintage jewelry boxes with three to five carat <laughs> antique and estate jewelry inside so you you should go check out the instagram it's like the ultimate eye candy i could watch it all day long i'm telling you it's, it's gorgeous the gorgeous jewelry that they have in there anyway so that's everything you guys um i hope you enjoyed me walking through some of my pickups from my recent trip to pennsylvania and i'll go ahead and link the previous video down below it's a long video so it's the type of thing that where you gotta get a snack or maybe get a cup of coffee or a drink and <laughs> to best enjoy um but it is a fun one so yeah thanks for tuning in i hope you guys are having a great week weekend and I'll see you at the next one. Take care. Bye.